Um, I guess I'll start introducing them. Uh, the guy struggling with a microphone right now. <laughs> uh, he is the he's the talent buyer and uh, he's a talent buyer and founder of Rockwell Talent. And more importantly, he is a longtime friend of mine, high school classmate. That's the best title, I think, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Brian with a Y, Brian with a Y, Brian Herrera. Welcome, bro. And then right next to him, uh, we have the founder of Make It Now Media and creative director of Rockwell Talent, Zaya. Sick, sick. And right next to him, someone that I think, uh, if you're a DJ, you're definitely going to relate to a lot. He's a DJ signed to Rockwell Talent. Please welcome DJ MK. All right, so let's get this thing started. Um, I know, especially for me, by the way, I'm Jordan Sanchez again. Uh, when I do the teaching upstairs at the Wired Sound Academy, I get tons of questions of how, how can I get my foot in the door? Uh, what does it take to get like a gig or whatever? So uh, let's start with Brian, since you're the talent buyer, since you're the founder of, of Rockwell Talent. Um, kind of give us a rundown for someone who might not have the experience uh, behind this. How do booking agencies work when it comes to DJs? Okay. So does this thing work? Yes, we're yes. good here. All right, great. Awesome to be here, by the way, Jordan. We're all super excited for this and, oh, yeah. and excited for the crowd that turned up. Hope you could get something out of it. And however we can help in the future, please, uh, let's stay in contact. Okay. Um, so when referring to booking agencies in general, I guess it's three things I like to um, bucket them in. Number one is the understanding of the different type of agencies, right? You have a booking agency. You can work with them exclusively or non-exclusively. And there's a management agency. They're more particular on your brand versus your gigs. Obviously, the booking agent is more you know, uh, interested in the, the booking and the gigs. All right, so that's the first thing to note, that there are different type of agencies out there as resources to you guys. And I would suggest looking into all of them, right? Um, and how each of them can help you in their own creative ways. The next thing to uh, note or, or to understand would be um, compensation. How do these agencies charge, right? Um, I've never worked with them. I'm embarrassed to ask. Um, X, Y, Z. So traditionally, you're looking, if it's a booking agency and they don't do anything else for you, um, you're on a 15 to 20% commission on bookings, okay? This comes from the total of the booking. So if the booking was $800, they're going to take 15, 20% of $800, um, some agencies will deduct travel costs and things of that nature. So you get booked in California, three grand uh, minus expenses. You'll pay the flight, you'll pay the hotel, and they'll take 15, 20% of what's left. So three grand minus flight, hotel, call it 2,400. They'll take the percentage from that. Um, so it's important to know, you know how, how they charge. On a management end, most of them work on retainers. So you pay them a set fee monthly, and they will deliver... X, Y, is, is, is the place going to fall? What is that? <laughs> okay. Um, so the flat retainer, how it works is, you know, no different than going and buying a pair of shoes. You're giving them, call it $10 a month, and they're giving you X, Y, Z. Um, one thing I would note taking that route is this... Uh, Discuss those deliverables beforehand because they can make something sound good, but then when it comes down to the deliverables, if you didn't have that ironed out, they can say they did their job, you're not happy. It was a waste of money and time on both ends. So I would suggest, you know, don't go that route. Uh, so to recap, it's, you know, make sure the different type of agencies, booking agency or management, exclusive or non-exclusive, um, how the compensations work. And then as far as deliverables, like I said, management companies are going to work more on your brand, your logo, your press kit. How are we selling you strategies behind how to get your name out there, put it in front of the right people, et cetera. These P's are killing me. Um, and uh, booking agencies are going to be more, you know, trying to get you booked and or servicing the bookings you already have. Um, so that about sums it up. Sick. So I want to, I'm going to throw a curveball because you gave me a list of stuff and I was going to kind of do like, Brian, Zaya, MK, but you said something about compensation. So I want to throw it to the DJ in the group, MK. Um, how do you know what rate you should charge as a DJ? Yes. Uh, go, I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> you asked Brian. That's it, right? Yeah, right. I asked Brian. Um, 
So yeah, that's that's a great question. A question that's probably on everybody's mind, right? It's like the taboo question. Uh, a good place to start is is don't be afraid to ask other DJs, right? Um, that's a great resource to tap into. You don't want to go into a venue and they got a budget of a thousand dollars and you're you're charging two hundred dollars, right? That you're leaving money on the table. So, um, good place to start with 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 rates is just ask around. Um, you ever want to know, I'd be happy to share information. The, the more DJs understand that and, and, and share that information, uh, it's, it's just better for everybody, right? You know, if, if you're charging 200 and I'm charging a thousand and the venue likes you at 200, guess what? Now the budget's 200. So, um, just ask DJs. The other thing is have an understanding of, you know, maybe you're starting to bubble up a little bit. You got lots of gigs coming in. You can't you can't keep up. Well, you probably got to raise prices as as demand increases. So um, there's no easy answer for this because every DJ is at a different point in their career. Every gig's a little different. Uh, you know, a bar gig might be different than a, a a big time club gig or a travel gig. There's a there's a there's a lot that goes into a rate. Obviously, having a guy like Brian helps uh, make that answer that question easier. But um, a good place to start is just really ask other DJs, figure it out, um, start where you think you're comfortable with it. And as you grow, you need to raise rates and you'll see that, oh, wow, like you can get a lot more than you ever thought you could. So I, I hope I answered the question. It's not it's not the easiest question to answer, but there's no one answer to it. Yeah, for sure. So you mentioned that Brian helps you out with this kind of stuff. So let's kick it back to Brian. Um <laughs> Um, so, okay, Brian, when someone, when a DJ is working with you and you're figuring these details out, you know, like, you know, what's the, what's my value as a DJ to a venue? What should I charge? What's my rate? What are the things that you look for when you are working for a DJ? Like what, what do you look for when signing a DJ with working with one and, and, and kind of like saying, okay, I'm going to spend time with this person. Uh, and then, you know, we can make things happen together. <laughs> no, it's loose. So, so that's um, I think a two part question to piggyback the first one, which is, you know, how do you know, how do I know what rates work for what venues? Um, do your homework, do your homework. Um, what get, what DJs are, is that venue currently booking, right? If they booked a headliner from Las Vegas last week, the budget's not 200. <laughs> Make sense? Um, if they're residents or friend of yours, Ask, like MK said, there's nothing wrong with that. On the contrary, if you don't ask and then you take a lower budget, that's called undercutting. And now you screwed over your friend versus if you would have asked and gotten the information, you both would have been on a better page. Um, on that same token, though, don't expect to always have the handout. Asking a rate is one thing. You know, I would stay away from asking what the booker's name is. When can I go meet him? When are you playing? Maybe you could introduce me. What's your blood type? How much pulse do you have? <laughs> Just start with the rate, you know? Um... And the second part of the question, I guess, is more, what do I look for personally when working with a DJ, period? Not so much the venue and the rates, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Um, I guess I'll break that into three categories, too. First thing to note, every booker is different. A booker might be looking for a particular look. Uh, some bookers might be looking for a particular sound. They only book at open format Latin parties. You're an EDM guy. You're not it. Make sense? Um... So there's a lot of criteria that goes into it. Me personally and Rockwell personally, um, I look for three things. Uh, is, it a, is it a good product? Are you a good DJ, right? How am I going to determine this? Mixes, uh, we might be able to send someone from the office to go see a gig that you already have. If you don't have current gigs, then your only hope is mixes. So I suggest you invest some time into those. Don't wait to get asked for a mix. Have an arsenal of mixes that will cover every scenario. Hey, I have a hip-hop party next Thursday. Can you uh, play hip-hop? Yeah, absolutely. Here's a 20-minute mix of me doing hip-hop. Hey, um, I have an opening for Diplo at this pool party. Do you play EDM by any chance? Yep, here's a 30-minute mix, EDM. Have that ready because in the two days that it takes you to make the mix, they book someone else. Okay? So be a good product. I think that's step one. That's always the most important. Step two would be uh, be a good brand. Okay, as a venue, especially uh, a lounge bar, nightclub, popular restaurant, uh, they're, they're going to put you on the flyer. 
which means that you're probably going to get tagged on that flyer. The venue does not want to tag an Instagram that has zero posts, three followers, and, and your profile picture is you shirtless in the yard. You know, like, be a DJ. Have a DJ brand. Have your press kit. Have your logo. Have your branding on point. Uh, have your mixes. Don't just have a mix. Make a quick little cover for it. It's 2023, almost 2024. You can do them on your phone. Um, so things of that nature, I'd say always, always, always protect the brand, okay? Um, also, when talking about the brand, and I know Zaya's going to touch a lot more about this, uh, quality over quantity. You don't have to post four times a day if they're shit. I'd rather post once a week and it'd be quality, okay? So understand, protect the brand because at the end of the day, it's what represents you when someone doesn't know you. They're going to go off of your brand, all right? So first thing I look at is traditionally the brand. Is this a DJ? Looks like one, smells like one, walks like one. Okay, does he play like a DJ? All right, he can mix, good song selection, understands the room that I was asking for, great. The third one to me is the most important. In the 10 years of Rockwell Talent, I've worked with plenty of DJs that are extremely talented, that we no longer work together, not because their brand sucked, because the third criteria to me is the most important, be a good person. Be a good person. The booker doesn't want to talk to an asshole. He talks to enough of those. They're called club owners, okay? Uh, the booker doesn't want to talk to some guy that thinks he knows it all. He knows it all. That's why he got the job and not you, okay? Um, have proper communication. If the booker texts you at 4 p.m. on a Wednesday and you reply Saturday at 2 p.m., I blocked you. I cannot rely on you. Does that make sense? Um, so in recap, it's a uh, be a good brand, be a good DJ, Right? Don't sign up for a room that you can't play because then you're known as the guy that tanked or girl that tanked. Right? Um, and be a good person. Uh, so I believe you already got them, but if not, you're going to get like little bookmarks that has our 10 codes on how Rockwell operates and what I expect from our roster. Uh, feel free to work by them. One of them is, you know, don't be an asshole. Miami has enough of them. Um, so that would tie into this criteria. Yeah, awesome. I love that. Um, you did mention Zaya and branding. So Let's hit it to Zaya right now because I know... Yo, watch the button. Yeah, yeah, just watch the button. It's a little flimsy. Mic on check, that one, two, one, two. <laughs> so Zaya, since you're like the creative mind behind Rockwell, um, I want to talk to you about branding and marketing and a little bit of social media and why all that is important. Um, why is that important? Why is all that important? <clears throat> well, I think branding... If we're talking about branding, branding is literally like everything. And when I say everything, uh, I literally mean everything. It's like your identity as a DJ. It's your, you know, your logo, your visual, your aesthetic on your Instagram, even your sound as a DJ. Like how, what style do you play? What, what uh, genres do you like to play? So branding is super important because it kind of gives you like a guideline of yourself. And when Usually when a booker or anyone really in the market doesn't know you, your brand to them, what they see is their per only perception of you. And the perception is like the value, at least in the first impression they have of you. So that's why the brand and branding is very important, especially when it comes to like, you know, social media and some of the things Brian touched on of just always being prepared 10 out of 10 times, and I would say literally 100%, the booker or really anything in life, the person that you want to work with is the one that makes your life the easiest and, and solves the problem for you. So if someone hits you up and they say, hey, I got this great gig. Uh, can you send me over your press kit, a mix, and your logo? And you send it within five minutes in an organized Dropbox links with all your assets and all your branding on point, they're going to choose you 10 times over the DJ that has 10,000 followers and looks cool, even though that's also part of the game, 100%. But the brand that you create is essential. And then talking about social media, that's part of your brand. Like, what type of brand do you want to represent? What, what do you align with? You know, you have to think of yourself basically as a business and you're the product and you're, you're running your own business. So every big business that you know, whether it's McDonald's, Google, or whatever the case, has their brand, their identity, their values, like our Rockwell Co., like what we stand for, and also our look. And we're, we only post a certain way because we're trying to portray a certain thing, or we don't talk about this because that's not what we're about, or we're only focused on this, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
So when it comes to social media, I mean, obviously, it's, it's no secret that like that's a big help when it comes to getting booked or bookings. Um, but when it comes to social media and branding, it's important because that's also what gets eyeballs on you when you're not out DJing yet or when you are DJing and you want to kind of climb that DJ ladder. Social media is crucial. You know, there's ways to do social media with, you know, I know people that don't like social media. You know, sometimes I'm a fan of it. Sometimes I fucking am obsessed with it. Uh, the algorithms. How does it work? What should I post? I should do seven seconds, not 14 seconds, because I'm going to get 20,000 more views. And da, 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 da. But all that stuff matters. And I know some people may, might not be comfortable with doing uh, content creation or, or social media, but you kind of got to do trial and error and find what's comfortable to you. Because whatever is comfortable to you is going to allow you to do it more and more often and not feel like weird about it or awkward. Uh, I'm, trust me, we've all gone through that stage of like, yeah, th this feels stupid to post. But then you kind of find your lane, whatever that is, and you, you, you kind of feel comfortable and you see the, the reactions and it kind of motivates you to do more. Um, and then as far as, you know, using that social media to get booked, it goes back to your branding and your identity. Like, what do you want to be known as? What do you want to be booked as? Are you looking to be a radio DJ? You're probably going to focus more on posting, you know, about new records or music or the charts or kind of working that station and radio chart life. Are you focused on getting booked at clubs like MK or private events internationally? You're probably going to want to focus on more high end content. And obviously, you're not going to start by posting a picture at Live because you're not going to play at Live, you know, right off the bat. But eventually, you know, you get the right content, the right curation. You kind of build your your way up like in like in a, in a business. You know, you start at the bottom and you keep going and going and going. But that attracts other similar clientele, other similar businesses that want to do business with you. And that just gives you more credibility. Because at the end of the day, like he said, you want to be reliable, credible, and consistent. And those things can be portrayed in your social media. Now, at the end of the day, like he said, the product has to deliver. So you could do all these things right. But if you go on and you're not ready for the opportunity and, it, and you know, you fail or it doesn't go well, they're probably not going to call you back. So before everything, your branding should be you're good at DJing. <laughs> and then you can work on those other things that will propel you and like i said for me i used to be really heavy when i was focusing on djing major clubs that's what i was targeting my audience was bookers managers agents other djs so all my content was literally you know that and i was gearing towards that uh, but that looks different for everyone, you know, and don't be afraid to also be yourself. Like, it doesn't have to be this cookie cutter DJ formula that, hey, I post three times a week. I'm at a club. What also makes you stand out is that you're unique and you have different tastes than everyone else. So I always tell people like, yeah, definitely know what you're targeting and who, and who you want to see your post. But always, you know, kind of stay true to your branding. And branding doesn't have to be such a technical term. It's like literally like Isaiah has its own brand in my life. It's not just like in the DJ world. And I try to portray that. So like whenever you're posting stuff, make sure you back it up when you're in person, your real life brand, like communicating because people want to work with people they like. And at the end of the day, if you're easy to work with, you're really good at your job and, you know, your brand is on point, you're going to succeed. So I think I might have answered it. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to actually stay with you because you did uh, you did mention like, you know, it was basically advice for the up and comers. But I could imagine like maybe I just finished class here at Wiretown Academy and I'm going into my Instagram and I open it up and I see, oh, sh damn, this is. Uh, no, yeah, I got that shirtless photo in my default. I got no photos of me DJing. I got no followers. Uh, and I don't even know where to start with this. So um, that's, I guess that's the question. Like what, in, if you're in that position, if you're in that point in your career or in your, in your journey, what are some of the things, what are the types of content that you can start posting and start getting some traction on? And like, what if, what if you feel like you're not like typical, like imposter syndrome? What if you feel like you're not good at it? 
Hundred percent. That's a great question. Um, like I said, at first you're not gonna get a picture headlining Eleven or Live or Tao, or whatever. So you gotta start at the bottom, like in anything else. And there's no shame in that. Like there is a little fake it till you make it, where you know you can use certain scenarios to your advantage. But it's just starting because if you worry about this is gonna look whack or this is whatever. You got to start somewhere and people need to go to your Instagram and at least like he said, okay, this guy DJs and yeah, in the beginning, it might be that small lounge or bar that, that you're a resident at, but you know, we've all been there as DJs and you can do a lot once you're comfortable in a place, you know, there's a spot I, I used to work at it back in the day and I would, you know, after a while you can bring your video guy and make a video maybe it's not going to be a mega nightclub but damn you rock in the place that's already a credibility that's a stamp of saying okay he's playing at this bar but i like what he's playing boom you know also mixes like he said it doesn't got to be all, all the time like you djing somewhere or dj 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 there's content you can put out to again give yourself credibility and proof and sometimes mixes go a lot more way, especially starting off when people just want to know, can you DJ? I've never heard you. So mixes is part of your brand. Like how many mixes are you putting out? Like, and all these things get traction. You know, there's also ways Jordan does a great job of putting out value content and, and tips and with wired sound and all that stuff. That stuff gets you noticed by people in, in the same industry, in the same circles. And that just kind of it, it's like you got to start because then it becomes a snowball effect where, OK, here's my first picture. Here's this. Here's me at a, a supporting my homie Jordan at a pool party, checking out Landis, headlining a, a pool event, a, a dare nightclub. Like you don't got to be the star every time. You just got to let people know that you're part of the culture and you're part of the game. And slowly but surely, it's going to take time. And like you said, like. You get frustrated in the beginning because you want to be out there and you want to be at a certain level. But trust me, it takes time. And, and these little things, as long as you keep building like step by step, they, they'll add up. And eventually, like your content will be like those people that you looked forward to being or being yourself. Um, but, yeah, I think really mainly the answer is just just start and try to find what, like I said, what's comfortable for you because if you try to force something or you try to do what you think is working for other people it's not going to work for you because they're like he said they're different stages of their career and everybody's different um but yeah and also you know w one thing that we do that other other agencies do and we do is you know kind of getting you in the right direction of maybe you're not at the point where you can get content from your gigs or or other or other sources but there's things you could do like creating that press kit creating that logo creating that visual so that when the time comes you're ready and you look pro and you could also advertise it to your instagram if that's the route you're going if you're trying to be a mobile dj you're probably going to want a website so you can run seo so you could get discovered by you know miami wedding dj that that's a whole different type of content and, and route you could go uh, but I think it always goes back to like identifying your brand and, and your kind of own identity and then making a plan, making a strategy and building block by block towards that goal. And he has something to add. Just to piggyback and give you an example on a perspective of a booker. He said, um, I'm not going to quote you because I don't remember the exact words, but basically like, you know, if you're at a low end bar and that's what you got and that's your residency right now. And, and, you know, you, that's what you have to work with, and that's what you post. Keep in mind, bookers have all types of work. So, you know, in, in this year, you know, I've done bookings, anything from 11, uh, Dare, Dare Pool, Out of Town, huge nightclubs, all the way down to $300 bars. So it might be your way to get the, the foot through the door with someone that has access to bigger stuff, right? So let's tie this into a perspective of, of, of a real-life scenario. And actually, Julian here, which is our office manager, by the way, at Rockwell Talent, um, he could attest to this because we have plenty of guys that we work with that we needed a $300 DJ. And everybody's acting like a $5,000 headliner, whether they are or they're not. So we don't have those options. So now we stumble across one and we say, all right, look, oh, here we go through the process. We don't know if he can DJ. Okay. How's his brand, Julian? Uh, yeah, it's okay. You know, he's got some pictures at this bar and at this place and this and that. He's got a couple mixes. 
He's got a couple videos of him DJing at his house or here at Wired Sound because they let him use the equipment. Um, I, th I think he passes the, the smell test. All right, cool. Can he DJ? Yeah, they, they sent in a mix. Here, check it out. All right, sounds good. Let's give him the chance. Here's a $300 gig. Don't shit the bed. Call the client on Monday. Hey, so how did so-and-so do? Oh, we love him. Yeah, I, I knew you would. Um, so you want him there every week? Yeah, great. And now the booker is confident re working with a great product, a great brand, and a great person. So guess what? Now the opportunity at a $500 gig when it presents itself, and now we don't have a $500 DJ for that night? Well, shit, what about that $300 guy that's a good person, good brand, and good DJ? Yep, he's now the $500 guy. And two months from now, we might need a $700 guy. And guess who that is? The reliable, great person, great brand, great DJ. Not the random guy I've never worked with that now we're going to go through this whole process again and you're a $700 DJ because you have a fake Gucci shirt on. No, I don't care. How's your brand? How's your product? Are you a good person? Okay, so I wanted to tie that in with like a real life example and a testament that this happens. Don't know the DJ at all? Give him one shot. Showed up early, met the manager, introduced himself. By the time he left, he met everybody by name. Great guy, gives good vibes. Manager loved him. Now he's getting 20 gigs a month from us. Okay? And I won't say his name, but this is real life. All right? Um, so I just wanted to throw that in. My bad, Jordan. I, I, I stole the show here. <laughs> that's all good. That was good. I think that was, that was, that's awesome. Um, uh, I think everything that you guys said it was basically like directed at a DJ that doesn't really know where to start, right? And it's from the perspective of a booker and then also from the perspective of like the creative mind, right? So I want to get a little perspective from the DJ side of things, especially since MK is like, I mean, like many people started in the bedroom, like not knowing the single soul, how, you know, on how to, how to network to get forward or what, what the next step is. And you have to learn that. So to someone in that, someone in that stage, what do you think is the best piece of advice for them from coming from the DJ's perspective? Yeah, just just basically like I would I'm saying as in terms of like from what I see here, people that either just graduated because they want to DJ or they're in a class because they want to DJ. They just haven't gone to that next step of like, OK, I learned how to DJ or I learned the, tech, the technical side. But what is the next step for, for, for me? You know, Yeah. so um, first things first, there's a couple things you got to do. But one thing you can do to really help yourself is just get out. Right. Go visit the venues you want to work at. Um, Go and, you know, you want to work at X venue, go spend nights there, check out the music, know the sound. You're never going to get the gig at that venue or the venues you want if you have no idea what the music's like, right? What is the music like early on in the night? What's the music like at prime time? What's the music like later on? What are the limits? Do they play hip hop? Do they play EDM? Where can you go with the night, right? Really immerse yourself uh, in the scene that you want to be in. You want to be a tech house DJ? Go spend every night at space, right? You want to be open format, hit the open format clubs. Uh, whatever it is you want to be in, immerse yourself in that scene, right? So uh, meet DJs, uh, just show that you're a part of the culture, right? Really like you, you, you got to prove that you love it, you, you know, not just, hey, I want to, I want to just do this because uh, there's money and girls in it or whatever you like, right? Go and show that you care about the, the craft and, and the music scene that that will take you a long way. So uh, first things first, right, go, go, go get out there. Uh, two, you really got to work on your skills, right? You really got to sharpen um, your craft because you're competing with people that have been doing this for 10 years before you, right? So really make sure you're a good DJ. Um, that, that, that encompasses a lot of things, uh, more than I can probably answer right now, but work on your skills, uh, work on your music, your music library, your musical knowledge. If you want to be an open format DJ, you got to know everything, all right? So if you're working in Miami, you got to know multiple languages when it comes to music. So really, really, really work on your craft and try to network as much as possible is the simple answer. Uh, that will take you far. Eventually, you'll get opportunities. Hopefully, you're prepared for them. Um, and if you've been doing what, what we just told you, you, you will be. Um, but if you're trying to move from the bedroom to an outside gig, go and immerse yourself in, the, in that space. Simple answer. Sick. All right. I'm going to stay with you because uh, I want to know how you did it, how you got to let's figure out some like chronological points, bedroom DJ, not then to starting to get bookings and then now to traveling everywhere for your gig. So how did you get from A to B and B to C? Uh, 
Uh, quick answer. Um, from A to B, let's say, from bedroom to playing in your local market and, and playing a lot. Um, I was younger when this happened, so it was a natural, easy progression where you're, like, playing house parties in high school and, you know, eventually you build your name up and now you're playing clubs and things like that. So that was a kind of natural progression that may be different than some of the individuals in this room depending on where you're at. But it's still the same principles apply where it's just – Get out, build a name for yourself somehow. Um, it could be tricky at first. Kind of getting the wheel started is probably the hardest part. Once you get that vehicle in motion, it's it's smooth sailing. It might be easier for me to explain how to go from B to C, which is let's say you want to go from your local market to traveling. Um, the best thing to do to do that is you got to really – build a name for yourself in your local market, right? You're not going to be able to play in Vegas or Boston or DC or wherever the hell you want to play if no one in your city knows you, right? Or if you have nothing going on in your city. If you can build a name for yourself in your local market, and if you're all in this room, you're fortunate enough to be in a market that's kind of prestigious. So you can leverage venues in South Florida and Miami and Fort Lauderdale to be able to travel so you have a step up than someone who's growing up in a small town, small market. So you you will naturally get opportunities if you're able to build a name and a brand for yourself here in your local market. Once you've done that, then you will get opportunities to be able to travel. Now, when you get those opportunities, you need to absolutely smash them because you won't get asked back, right? So nice. You got that one travel gig. Well, guess what? You're never going back because you sucked, right? Or you bombed or whatever it is. Because guess what? Now you're not only competing locally, you're competing on the national scene, right? So they got they got the best DJs coming in all the time and you're trying to crack that rotation. So that's something you got to worry about when you get on the national level. But even just on a local level, you got to crack a rotation in your local market that already has great local DJs. So study those DJs, study those rooms. And, and and just really, really, really love this shit and work on it every second you have and you will you will get somewhere, but it, it's not going to be uh, overnight, okay? Sick, awesome. All right, I want to I wanna do something kind of fast, like a little lightning round. You're used to doing this with me. That way we could get to like a little, like some questions from, from the people here, from the audience, right? Because I think that's where we're going to get to some really good stuff. So I'm going to ask, it's going to be a question for all three of you. You answer, you answer, you answer, and then I'll, I'll do two of those questions. First one, I think is going to be interesting because I think this is, uh, you get a lot of information out of like negative information, you know, like, so what do you think is the one thing that you would tell DJs not to do? Do not do this under any circumstances. And that's going to, that's, that's going to be a question for all, all of you. Hey, the next question is starting over there. <laughs> I need time. Um, what not to do. So everyone on this stage is probably going to give you a very, very different answer based on what we, you know, in a creative end, on a booker end, and on a DJ end would not do. Um, on my end, the most important thing being being someone that relies on DJs to be a good product for our clients, um, be prepared, have a plan. Those go, you know, hand in hand. Um, like MK said, as far as knowing the room, it's knowing the room from an hour before it opens to 20 minutes after it closes. Does that GM stick around at the end of the night and take a shot with people? You need to know that before that night so that you know to pack up your shit quick and go take a shot with them because that's how you're going to become buddies. Um, you need to understand the room. So what not to do, walk in somewhere like you're the shit and walk out super stinky because you're not. Okay? Uh, so be prepared. That's a, that'd be what to do or what not to do is don't show up unprepared. <laughs> there you go. All right, yeah. Zaya, same question. What would you tell DJs not to do? Uh, I think... I would say, and I think we can all attest to this, is never get too comfortable. Uh, there, And I'm talking about from the DJ, like your actual gig, to the branding, to your mixes, to this business is fucking cutthroat. And, and you know as much as I do, or and so does he, where you can be the guy you could be the the shit you you're the number one go-to dj you can't do any wrong for like 364 days and then there's that one night that whatever reason you maybe drank too much or 
you played the wrong song at the wrong time as the owner that's never there happened to walk in and you're like man this is my residency i run this shit it's all good i could put a mix whatever that's when you're the most vulnerable when you're comfortable and you think you got it because be believe me there will be another dj replacing you the next day or the next week like that and that trickles down to like you know your skills you always got to be out listening to the what the other teachers are playing what what's working uh just sharpening your skills in general when the new shit comes out you got to be on top of it the stems the, the gear the mixers the drivers everything because there's always that DJ that's like nerdy now in his bedroom at three in the morning looking at DJ forums or podcasts or practicing or making a mix. So from your gigs to, you know, having fun, girls, drinking, guys, whatever, you got to always be on point because you never you never know who's looking, who's in the building, who's listening to you and what DJs are coming to take your job. Like it could be your homies looking in the back like, oh, I like that song you played. Yeah, and then he's there next week and he took your residency because you got too comfortable. So yeah, I would say don't ever get too comfortable in life really, but DJ. <laughs> All right, MK, what should DJs not do? Number one thing. Um, similar to Zaya, just don't be unprofessional, right? Like if, if you show up late, if you get too drunk, if you, the music turns off, if you're you're in the kitchen with uh, with your phone talking to the the bartender that you like, and you're supposed to be DJing, you're gonna get fired eventually. So it doesn't matter how good you are, how much they love you, how big your brand is. If you're unprofessional, your time is numbered. Simple. Sick. All right. Now the next question, starting with MK. We're gonna start with MK. Uh, what makes a great DJ? Um. What makes a great DJ, I've thought about this a lot. There's so many things that go into being a great DJ, but if I had to boil it down to like one thing, one or two things, it's it's being an elite programmer, right? So what I mean by that is like, you need to be really good at picking songs and knowing how to stack those songs together in a way that creates more energy than the individual so, you know parts of that song. So um, if you have to pick one thing, it's being unbelievably good at music right so what we do is play music so your music has to be amazing so whether that's the 10 percent of songs that you that me and you don't play but you play some cheesy shit and i don't that's the difference that's what it comes down to so be really good at programming music yeah i think there's so many answers that you could give to this but at the end of the day, everything literally comes down to your skills because you could do everything we're talking about here. But if you're not good, it, you won't get called back. Um, so I would say being able to read a room, uh, which is, you know, kind of similar to programming, but just being able to read a room and getting comfortable with, OK, this is not working. I need an exit plan in 10 seconds because I'm going to lose the whole crowd or OK, this uh Big Spender just came in. They like Bailey Funk Brazilian music. I better get that crate ready right now because they're about to pop five doms. Or owner just walked in. His favorite song is ACDC. I better get that queued up. I don't care if I clear the dance floor because this guy's paying my check. And he is very adamant that I need to play this song when he walks in the building because he has a big ego. And that's fine because I don't have an ego. But being able to read the room is essential while being able to program it because that's i know djs that are not as good technically but they know what to play and they get booked a lot and there's no that that's the game and there's no right or wrong they do their job and they know how to read the room and program the room and make people stay from 10 p.m to 5 a.m that's gonna trump any dj that can do every scratch and win a dmc and all that like that's what bookers and managers and agents really really care about the their bottom line so being able to read a room whatever all that entails good uh good build up here so program read room and i'll tie both of those into create an experience if you program the room right and you read the room right then you're gonna create an experience. And venues and bookers pay for experiences. 
Why? Because their guests are there for their experience. So if you are able to provide it and the guests continue to come back, you did your job. If you program the night in your head, amazingly, from start to finish, you had a nine-hour set, you had everything down, and you showed up, and you didn't realize that it's National Hispanic Week or whatever, you got to pivot. That's now reading the room, right? So I think it's a combination of both with the desire and outcome of create an experience. And piggybacking a little bit on what Zaya said as far as know what to play and when to play it. And trust me, if he knows a lot of guys that get booked that aren't great, I know a lot of guys that get booked that are not good DJs. Um, but they are good song selectors. They're good um, experience creators. And you got to keep in mind, unless you're at a DJ's venue, 98% uh, of the people in that room do not know how to scratch. So if you're doing it right or not, they don't know right? Guess what? I have been booking DJs in major venues and a mega market like South Florida since 2009. I can't turn this shit on. I don't know how to do this. I am not a DJ. So I am who you guys are trying to impress, not me, Brian, but the regular person. I am looking for the experience. I am looking for Things that I've received in the past on, on both of their sets. Man, they're playing my favorite music, but they're just doing it differently. I couldn't leave. I have owners that have told me, I'm passing by tonight for 10 minutes. All right, cool. Hey, what are you still doing here? It's been four hours. I can't fucking leave. This guy is playing all my favorite shit, but in ways I've never heard. That's creating an experience. Everyone has Spotify or Pandora or Apple Music or you name it. All the music you're playing is on there. So why are you any different than that? It's what are you doing with that music and what are you creating with that music to be able to justify your worth? You are not there to do your job. You are there to deliver something, an experience. Your product is delivering that. So keep in mind that you are in the service industry, okay? You are providing a service. No different than if there was a bartender here right now and she made real shitty mojitos, Nobody would order a mojito. Doesn't matter if she can flare and do the whole dance. The drink sucks. Does that make sense? So that'd be my answer. What would a, a program read the room and create an experience? Nice. I like that. I mean, those are three very important things. For just DJ. to clarify, though, like you can't train wreck. Like you can't just play awesome yes. music and be, <laughs> and be train wrecking all night. That's yeah. that's not gonna work. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, just just in case, you know. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean. Definitely, like there's there's levels to this, right? Like you gotta you have to pass that first level before you can even start thinking about am I a good DJ or not, right? Um, all right, let's open up let's open up the room to questions. I want to know if you guys uh, have anything to say to anybody up here. You could even ask Landis, me, uh, whatever whatever you want. Um, we'll open it up to you guys. So who's got a question? It's a really good question. Um, it's really dependent on the venue. So some venues, that's what they want, right? They will, depending on the format of the music, right? Um, certain formats of music lend itself better towards that style of DJing. Certain markets, certain venues, that's that's the style they want, right? You go to New York City, you're gonna do that. You you go to Wynwood, you better be able to do that, right? You go play a house club, you don't have to do that. Or maybe an open format club, whatever. You may not do that less. So it's really dependent on the music you're playing and what the venue wants. Some venues say, hey, don't even plug the mic in, right? Some venues, you they may demand that you're on that shit all night long. Um, so it's, it's also a style. Like if you're not comfortable with that style, okay, that's fine. You just may limit yourself to certain venues, certain vibes. That's okay. So obviously if you're not comfortable with it, that's, I get it, but I will say the last thing I will say is um, definitely try to push yourself out of your comfort zone. If you're not comfortable with that, get comfortable with that because it will it will add to your sets, right? If you're an incredible DJ and you can use just a little bit, right, tastefully, it will add to your sets and it also will lead to other opportunities that 
um, you may need not even realize you're capable of, right? So just try to push yourself out of that comfort zone if it's something you can't do or you don't feel comfortable with. Just work on it at home. Like literally go and play a set, grab a microphone and practice. Like if you were in the club, what would you be doing? Listen back to it, record your set, listen back and say, hey, I got to work on this or go study a DJ that's really good on the mic because it is a tool that if if you don't use, you're kind of at a disadvantage. Now, you don't need to use it all night, but it's 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 a seasoning that you can use. And if you don't use it at all, you're you, you may be selling your show short, you know. Yeah, that's good. He, he mentioned that it's like a tool. When we when we do class upstairs, we always ask, like, what are students uh, comfortable with in terms of mic work? And the reason why we ask that is because, like, everything in DJing, like, whether you are a superstar scratcher or you're really good at uh, drop mixing or whatever, uh, whatever any of these little techniques that you use as part of your skill set, the mic is the same. It's, a, it's part of your skill set. Like, if you're a Pokemon... And you have like three attacks and one of them is mic, is mic work. It could be the one that's the kill shot. You know what I'm saying? But it also could be the one that misses all the time. So you, you got to figure that one out, you know? Sick. All right. Uh, question. So, uh, well, my name is Chris and um, I go by Loft 93. I'm a DJ, music producer from uh, New York City and I just relocated to Miami. Um, I used to have a lot of, I, I had, I had gigs already stationed in New York city and coming to this, uh, new environment is very different, very culture, culture shock too, as well. Um, I was wondering, cause I'm starting from scratch now. So I was wondering if, uh, once I go to a venue or a venue and ask, uh, for a gig, um, should I be able to do it for free or should I just, uh, that that's one of my questions. Should, should I do it for free or just like go in and ask for a rate right away? You have a history of turning it off. I had to check. <laughs> that's a great question. Um, one that might get overlooked very often and um, good experience coming to a new market. I don't know how many people you knew down here before you made the jump from New York, you probably know a bunch because half of New York came down here anyways. Uh, glad to have you guys. Um, but, you know, similar example, Zay and I moved to uh, Vegas from 2013 to 2017. We knew one guy. Figure it out, you know. Um, so I see a lot of that in your question. I would, um, I would say if you're talking with the venue directly, you should never do anything for free, okay? Um, however, understanding that this conversation, let's say, um, Chris, right? Chris, yeah. Hey, uh, I'm Chris. Uh, I'm a DJ. I just moved to uh, South Florida. I was just wondering, do you have any openings here that I could maybe uh, sneak myself into the rotation? I'm willing to work for it. Uh, what, do you, what do you mean? Uh, well, yeah, we use DJs. Um, well, look, you know, my regular rate is X, um, but I understand you don't know me, so if I do an hour for free for you to check me out, can we talk about future dates, right? So what did you do? You explain to the venue that you're here to play ball, right? I'm not coming in here demanding my rate because you don't know me. Um, but you're also not saying I'm going to come and do the set, five-hour set for free, and now they didn't pay anybody that night for it. As a booker, what I do in these situations is, um, let's say MK has a really good residency that we know he's real comfortable at. You might go play for 30 minutes with him for free, but the venue doesn't know that. You're doing that to get in, your, you know, in the door and to get checked out right? Um, so if it's with the venue, I'd say never for free. You got to package it better because now you're the free guy. How the hell are you going to be my $800 guy? Does that make sense? Right? Now, if you're talking to a DJ or a buddy, that's different. Hey, man, I'm trying to get exposure. I'm trying to practice in a, in a real setting. Can I come rock with you, you know, do two 30-minute sets for free? You know, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll drive you there, you know, like make their life easier, right? No different than making a booker's life easier. And that's who we would want to work with. Make your DJ buddy, you know, easier, uh, life's easier. So I would say, um, if it's a DJ, if it's someone within the same craft, if it's, uh, you know, it's no different than like, uh, two, two basketball players go and practice for free, but would you play for the heat for free? You know what I mean? Um, so I, I'd say, you know, talent to talent, that's one conversation, Talent to booker, that's one conversation. They're kind of similar. Talent to venue, you got to repackage that a little better and make sure that you're not coming off as the Walmart. 
You know, you're, you're, you're Merrick Park. You're Nordstrom. You're not Walmart, right? But Nordstrom has some sales every once in a while. You know what I mean? So I, w- I would, I would um, approach it that way. Do you guys have anything to add to uh, the great question? Uh, I would just add to that on the, like, counter side of that. Um, definitely be careful how you, you know, position those conversations. And even especially with other DJs, because I've definitely been in that position, don't make sure you don't get exploited. And what I mean by that is like, yeah, you know, you want you get your foot in the door and you want to get familiar with the clubs and the scene. But then there comes a point where you kind of have to, you know, speak up for yourself or, you know, not in a bad way, but like, hey, uh, you know, when can we start talking about, you know, my rate or how we can work myself up to a rate or whatever the case is, because there's definitely, unfortunately, not even just DJs, just people in the world that, you know, they'll use that as free labor and like, oh, now I don't have to open. I could have an opener for free or I'll buy him, you know, his Uber and or a taco. And now I I got one less hour. I got a DJ because I'm, I'm the shit. And, you know, I've had scenarios, no lie where my homie or I thought he was my homie at the time <laughs> uh, said, hey, man, you want to open for me at this spot in the South Beach? Fucking world renowned spot in the back room. And I'm playing my two hours and he shows up and he just walks in and he says, oh, I don't I don't like I don't like the crowd tonight. I'm out. And and he just dips because, you know, it wasn't popping enough for him. And he rode out and I played till five in the morning. And when I go to, you know, talk to him about, hey, so, you know, I, I played 10 to 5 la- uh, last night, you know, uh, what, what, what's up with the check or how, how are we doing this? He almost positioned it like he did me a favor and gave me like an opener check, which was like maybe less than 100 bucks or 100 bucks. And at that, t- at that time, I was already doing those favors, you know, and you just got to know and recognize those times where like, OK, maybe this time I move on or set a precedent a precedence to you know get paid so not every free gig is free basically all right any other questions yeah yeah so how about for you um yeah i agree you were talking about websites earlier i was wondering what's what is like a good time to like because i made mine but it's like i don't think i would get enough like reach in the website you know for bookings i think it's better people talk in person or you're like Yeah, that's a good question, especially like now in 2023. Uh, I would say back in the day, the website was definitely a key, but it's like not at the top of the totem pole right now, especially, you know, if you're starting now or whatever the case is. Um, because nowadays people aren't really going to a website to like, just check out, check you out or like see what you're about. Basically they go to your Instagram or your social media to really see what you're about and what you're posting. And if they go to your website, chances are they're going to click your Instagram to check you out and see what you're about. And now, I mean, don't get me wrong. A website is great if you can have it and like there's valuable content and something that's going to make you look good and credible and that can sell yourself or, and, or, or even a website. I really websites to me are now landing pages. So whether it's a link tree or a one link or whatever that the case is, but something that you can make again, like we said earlier, the booker or the agent's life easier. If you have everything in a Dropbox organized, that's great. But if you could send your website or it's djzaya.com and then it's just like residencies, mixes, videos, boom, all in one shot. That's like your press kit, but it's accessible and, and clickable at all times. So in that case, if you do have quality and content that's going to make you credible and, you know, build your building your brand like that, then I think a website is definitely helpful. But in the beginning, I mean, I would suggest at least bare minimum, you had to have like your link tree and all that on point, just so people, if they want to know where to go or where to hear your mix, it's not like a never ending, like hunt to find Does this guy do mixes. Does this guy, you don't know how many times we go through like, Oh, they didn't send any links. Let me see. And then you go on Google and then they're not that on top of the, of the results. So you gotta like go. And then you see, they have a page on this thing and it's like, 
if you just have a link tree or or, or just any link that takes you somewhere from your Instagram or, or your TikTok or your Twitter or your X, whatever, to where everyone can see your product. That's that's always a key and make it as easy as possible. So if that for you right now is a link tree and not a website, that's cool. As long as I could get to it, I don't really care that it's on a website or a link tree. But a website helps as long as, you know, it's on point. Like you don't want a website and it's just one picture of you DJing and like I've been DJing for one year. Check me out. It, it might do you negative more than a positive. So I would say yes and no, but just, you know, depending on where you're at and and really just focusing on making it easier for your audience, not so much like having a sick ass website that's like going to be all bells and whistles and flash and and mo and motion and all that, but more of making sure all your stuff is in the right place and people can find it. And yeah, just having your brand on point. I know you didn't ask me, but I'll, I'll chime in there. Um, two things I'll point out on that. Number one, make sure it's easy to update. Okay. Cause if you make a website today and you go through the trouble and it takes you three weeks of your time and everything to update takes forever, then it might do you, like he said, a disservice because a year from now I go to check out your website and it's the shit you were doing 14 months ago, you just you know screwed yourself over. It's a lot easier to post a picture on Instagram and update this new residency you got. It needs to be just as easy for you to do that on your website. So make sure you build it out on the back end where it's like you know easy because if not, it becomes a, an added expense in your life of, oh fuck, I just made this new video. I gotta pay this guy to put it on my website now. And then the second thing to point out is, you know, and he kind of touched on it, but I'll be a little more direct. No one's gonna fucking find it. No one's going to find your website. That website is not for people to find. That website is so that when you meet someone, you can pass that on, whether it's in a business card, whether it's in a QR code, whether it's in a, you know, a shareable tap dot thing. Nowadays, there's a million options, right, how to get it to that person. As a booker, if I see that you send me a Dropbox link, okay, you got your shit. You send me a website link and it's completely up to date and it looks like a Dropbox, not only do you got your shit, but you care more than the other guy to me. So it might, you know, say, all right, apples to apples. Let's go with this apple that, you know, keeps himself shinier, right? No, no different than the apple, but you got the opportunity. The other person did it. So that's the only thing I wanted to, to, to chime in on that. And also just to add, like now, nowadays, it's way easier to make your own website. There's tools like Wix, Squarespace and, you know, Linktree as the very basic but you could set up a, an automated system where your Instagram is automatically updated on your website. Your mixes are automatically updated on your website and it's very clean, consistent and, and, and simple where everyone can just see the information. So in that case, yeah, like if you, if you can make your own website and, and like landing page in, in essence, I would definitely go for it. But just like we, we said, like make sure it's, you know, quality not just you have a website because like you're a dj and now look check me out i have a website it could do you a disservice because that might be the first impression if you send it to someone like that so even i i'd rather have like he said someone send me a website and it's not really so much like oh check me out i'm a resident here a dj here it's like hey here's a link to my mixes here's all my press photos organized here's my logos in case you need them here's my press shots that are updated and now I have a beard and I'm not like baby face anymore. You know, all that like nice with your logo on top, branded, boom. You, you, you're gonna impress someone more than just like having a domain and like some bullshit up there. Also, one thing to consider when you're putting content on a website too is like see where that reach goes. Like, is that awesome cinematic video better on your website or better on YouTube? You know, is that real? But is that like vertical video better on your website or is it better on your Instagram? Because if you're going to waste your time putting that content on a website and not going to get that many eyes on it, what's what's the point? You know. Sick. Any more questions? Yeah. I, yeah keep, I thought I thought there was more coming. That's why. I was like, ah. let's, let's go up here. <laughs> what is the DJ? What 
pillow. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so it's it's difficult, right? Because you wanna you wanna make sure you're doing a good job, and you wanna have energy, but maybe not too much energy, right? So. Uh, definitely I would try to get creative where you're looking for songs that you think he's not going to play. Uh, I'm not sure if you are friends with him. You have a, can you talk to him? Like that you, you feel free to reach out, you know, like if you haven't already, but, uh, just say, Hey, what, what do you, what do you feel comfortable with me playing? Um, as a, just a general rule of thumb, I would stay away from anything that like is super hot right now that you think you would want to play if you were headlining. Right. But Maybe that artist has B-side records or stuff that's hot still, but he's probably not going to touch. Maybe it's like stuff from a little older, you know, like pre-2020 or even stuff that you don't think. Because realistically, he's probably going to play like two hours. So it's not like he's got a lot of time. So that's actually a great opportunity for you to dig into your music library and find stuff that like um, is perfect for that setting that he's not going to play. But you can play and still create good energy and show off your skills and maybe impress um important decision makers at the venue you know so um i would just really prepare your set try to try to get in your crates really you know think it through but also don't overthink the fact that yo you're just playing music it's gonna be fine flow's a great dj so whatever you do i'm sure he's not gonna be upset you know he's gonna be able to still do himself so uh don't overthink it you know uh well and also just to add that i would definitely if you haven't so already gone to pilos like a handful of times you know catch the vibe go early go late all that you know just so you're comfortable with that but besides like the dj aspect i think one thing that is important that like a lot of people don't do anymore and i think at least in my career like especially coming to a new market or or you're not known as well as other djs is going above and beyond like just being an opener and playing music and writing out like after your set like you know showing up early obviously because you're the opener but you know being kind of a facilitator for the headliner flow whatever whoever it is like if he needs water and he if he needs a drink or make sure you know when you're swapping like the swap is like you could be axed as a dj if the swap is just not to put pressure on you but i'm saying like not and not and not so much like technically i'm talking about like you're like, yeah, I'm done. Here you go. Figure it out. Like, not, I'm going to figure it out. I'm a DJ. Like, I, I've been doing this. But just, like, that attitude is, like, kind of like, oh, well, you're not even, like, you don't want to help or you don't want to make sure everything is good together because the night is dependent on both of us. So, you know, I used to stay from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. And I was playing 10 to 12 and 3 to 5. And I was there all night. I was getting the DJ shots if he's drinking, the DJ water if he's not drinking, Making sure the the booth isn't like slammed and girls are like messing up the, the shit, uh, you know, talking to people that want requests and like kind of blocking it off for the DJ, like all those little things and making and I'm the one swapping over because I want him to just hop on and be pressure free and, and do his thing. Like, you know, set him up it, at the end of the day, like you guys are a team and you want the night to be successful for all of you, because then that's going to be success for the venue and also that DJ, whether it be Flo or MK or whoever, is going to be like, yo, I, I fucking fuck with this guy. Uh, I know I could trust him. He's a good dude. And I know like uh, like when he's there with me opening, like I know I could trust him. And then that eventually will lead to like the DJ being like, hey, man, you want to play a little longer? Hey, man, you want to like, I, yo, I'm stuck on 995. I'm not going to make it. You got to rock all night. You know, those little things that are not so like about technically about the DJ and the music selection. Those things go a long way, and and especially now that I don't think the younger generation is like prone to that. They just think, oh, I got a booking, I did my job, you know, uh, not in a bad way, just you know, and I gotta go home, or I, I'm gonna go to the next party and check out this doper party. Yeah, you could do that, but you know, it's the guys that that stick around, and also the hang, man, the hang after the gig is like that's where deals get made that's where friendships get made and that shit is just as important as like the djing like i've built a lot of relationships of just eating at four in the morning because i stayed with the headliner and you know and and that's when you learn and that's when you build and that's when you get opportunities because they know they can hit you up and and they can trust you and and then i, I as far as all that goes then you got to be prepared with the music and make sure you're not burning them and all that stuff but I think those those things like kind of behind the DJing uh, go a long way as well. Oh, 
Love let, let me let me add on to something that non DJ because you're worried about what you're gonna play, what are they, you know what what are people gonna think? You know, am I gonna play the right songs? Did I play the right songs but too right? Right? These are the songs Flo's gonna play, etc. 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 So you're you're walking into this as a perspective as a DJ in the form of what a DJ does, plays music at a venue, taking it a step further and and considering yourself a, a brand and a product. Um, I'm gonna assume that the only person you know at Pilos is Flo. Is this correct? In the sense of like, you're playing, let's say on a Friday, Saturday, can you call the manager? No, you can't. So go way to start conversation with these people because guess what? You're just opener number 645 to the manager. It's just another face that he hasn't seen and all right, I hope I see you again. He's gonna give you a peace sign and that's it, right? Um, take that time after your set to watch, you know, who's the manager? Him, great. Hey, what's up, man? I'm uh, William, right, William? How was my set? How, what's the feedback? Is there anything I can do to be better next time? That to me, as someone that has managed venues before, as a booker, um, you give a shit. I wanna work with people that give a shit, right? So show that you give a shit. Sometimes people are a little too timid, shy, uh, unexperienced, inexperienced, whatever that case may be. Come out of your comfort zone just like you would say some happy birthday shit on the mic and you're like, uh, how's this going to go? Walk up to that manager and go, how's this going to go? Hey, I'm William, man. What's up? You know, you're going to get an interaction where the manager's having a bad day and he's stressed and he's going to go, cool, bro, leave me the fuck alone. And you're going to be like, okay, see you next week, right? And then you're going to get the other guy that might be bored and he's going to have a 40-minute conversation with you. And now next Saturday, Flo's not playing. It's another DJ and he's like, yo, I need an opener. And the manager's like, oh, have you ever heard of William? He did a good job with Flo, right? Be a brand. What's a brand? When I say McDonald's, you think of an M, right? Like, be a brand. When, when I think of a great opener in Pilos moving forward, they should think of William. And then you will grow, like they've said, in certain experiences where, you know, you might have by default to rock the whole night. Now you got to do that. Go up to that same manager. Hey, man, first time playing all night. How'd I do? Is there anything I can do better? Thank you so much for the opportunity, right? That's how you're going to stand apart night and day from the other opener that showed up did a great job with the music, packed his shit, left. He can't even walk into the venue next week as a guest. Like, he has to pay at the door. That's, what did you do? You know, you did all that for what? The $120 that you're getting? Like, that's not it, you know? Uh, so that's the only thing I, I wanted to add to that. Great question, by the way. For those that didn't hear the question, the question was, I'm opening at Pilos for a known DJ in Miami in the near future. I'm shitting my pants. What should I do? It was something like that. Okay, uh, what's, the, what's, the, what's the next question, or who has another question? I saw a couple of hands. Back there, back there. Back there, say it with your chest. Okay. Okay, so good thing about that, are you asking me or them, by the way? <laughs> Fuck, uh, Fuck them. Uh, no, so in all seriousness, the good thing is, you know, obviously Fort Lauderdale's 30 minutes away. So um, you're going to know people. With no this, traffic, with no traffic. When, yeah, with no traffic. Today it was actually two Today hours. Today it was like two hours. Minutes. God bless. Um, but no, work your, work your resources, work your circle. Someone in your circle knows that answer. You just haven't asked them, okay? Um, I would also say, obviously, you know, social media-wise, you can find out you know, what's the common denominator among certain venues, right? So if there's a group that owns three or four venues, who's that guy that gets tagged in all the DJ posts? He's probably the booker, you know? Um, who's the manager that focuses on the DJs? You'll know because he's the one that takes pictures like this, right? So it's little things like that that if you, if you were to look at it from the outside in, right, you'll, you'll find the answers on that. Um, another thing that I would say is ask some maybe on uh, – nothing to do with age, but I guess further ahead DJs like, hey, if you ever need an opener, keep me in mind. That's amazing to know, right? Like the guy that has to do a six hour set and the venue's like, bring an opener if you, if you want, but they're like, oh, I don't know who to call. Well, shit, now they know who to call. And now if you, you know, do what William's doing next week, you're going to meet that manager and then you're going to follow him on Instagram and then now you're going to see who follows him and then you're going to build your network and network and network. So I would say, um, well, I should have started off with this. Go to Miami one day, right? If, if you're not already, but go to Miami. Um, link up with a DJ. You might not even know him or her, but you know they play in Miami and they're good. Go, go check them out as a guest. Go hear them. After they're set, hey, I'm a DJ too. Like you would not, you would be surprised how open 
uh, especially the more credible, bigger names are to people that are really in that community. Um, the older you get, uh, the more you want to kind of pay it forward, right? So like like the example of, you know, wow, you give a shit, you're good, and you have a great rent. I want to work with you. I want to help you so that in turn, you know, you can help us by, by filling in XYZ bookings. Um, so I would say if, if you wanted to sum it up into a couple points, um, figure out who are those DJs doing the venues in Miami that you would want to play at and go hear what they're doing. Maybe you go hear them one night and you're like, oh shit, this isn't it. I don't want to do this at all. It's good to know then before you got booked, right? Um, work your, your market here and see what are names that play in Fort Lauderdale that you do know that also play in Miami. And maybe you could tag along one of those days and go to their gigs with them. And then three, use social media to your advantage and find out who's the, and you know, sh Get get uh get get connected with them. Find uh find a time to pass by and introduce yourself. Uh, you know, I would stay away from um like DMs and random like you know they could come off uh, for lack of a better word like thirsty to to work and then it's like ah you know they're 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 dying for a gig right versus taking a more professional route and using it more about how can we start a working relationship not hey give me an opportunity right. Um, that approach sucks. Why do I need to give you anything? I don't know you. Uh, so it's, it's more of like, all right, well now we'll have a working relationship going. There's synergy here. You're providing something that we, you know, need and we're providing something that you want a booking and an ability to do good at a gig. And that's, that's how you grow. Okay. Great, great question, by the way. Yeah. Just to add to that, uh, you know, relationships are really important in this game. So building those relationships, whether it's someone you meet or someone you know, you know, that could be the person that eventually introduces you to someone else or just circles. But make sure when you're building these relationships, they're not so transactional. Like you're not just being friendly because you want a gig like you got to think in the long term and thinking in the long term allows you not to like make those decisions of like being thirsty or asking for a gig because like you're at the venue like you know you got to go to a venue a lot of times before they're just like man you're here every week like why don't you just dj here like that shit happens they're like oh you're here again bro you should dj here or, or man you really like this place and like he said, like DJs, you know, sometimes you might be intimidated, but the older you get, the more you want to help. And there's a lot of DJs that I met like out of, out of whim. Like I just went up to them like, hey, I'm a DJ too. And they're like, oh, that's awesome. And then, you, you know, you spark a conversation and slowly those relationships build. And, and, and literally DJs are like, you know, we're like in a secret, not a secret society, but we're like in our own little world of like, you know, I, I can relate to your struggle of starting off. So it's not like I'm in a position and now I'm like the shit. Like, no, I know what that's like. So if you're showing up every week and you're asking questions and you're like want to learn, you know, that goes a long way with a DJ. And, you know, we, we like to look out for each other because we know those, those struggles and those you know, career development steps that you have to take. So I would just, you know, just to circle back, just don't make, make sure you're not, you know, being transactional in your relationships and like you really genuinely vibe with this person. And yeah, they, they might be able to help you down the line, but it's because you guys are in the same vibe, the same alignment of like where you're working or where you want to work and you guys get along. And then that person, how many times have, we made friends with securities or bathroom attendants because, you know, they're grinding. They're not like the managers or they're not the, the people bossing. Five years later, they're the new general manager. Five years later, they're running all the, the hospitality group. And it was like, damn, I remember when you were in the bathroom. And he's like, yeah, I remember when you were opening at, and playing till six in the morning and we were there fucking hating our life. And, he, <laughs> and then, you know, that's a long lasting relationship that you, you treat it sounds cliche, but you treat the bathroom attendant the same way you treat the manager. And that shit goes a long way. And people will see, you know, the genuine relationship that you build in that. Sick. Got it. I, I saw more hands up for other questions. So if you got the, if you got them, ask away.
yeah, no, I'm familiar with the the struggle. Um, may, one one resource that you may not have tapped into that that's actually pretty good is um, try sending it to record pools. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with what that is, but yeah, send them to record pools because then all of a sudden now you're getting put in front of you know all the working DJs and across the world, right? So that's a great way to get your music actually played in venues, which is probably the most exposure you can, you know, ask for at that point. So uh, sending it to record pools is great. Maybe it ends up in like a top 10 of one of these big record pools. That's huge, right? And now if you can keep doing that, maybe they reach out to you to send them stuff all the time. Awesome option. Maybe other DJs start looking for your stuff. Go to your SoundCloud, follow you that way. So um, that's just one recommendation. Unfortunately, there's no good solution to the whole bootleg edit thing. You know, you could try, you keep trying. Maybe you make a a secondary SoundCloud account, whatever it is. Uh, I'm sure these guys might have more answers for you on that front, but definitely try to send them to record pools. And also, like you, when you're talking about um, making original music and stuff, a lot of times it helps. I know a lot of DJs, I mean, me, myself, him too, uh, but, you know, starting off just making edits and, and sending them off to the record pools, but also other DJs kind of builds your credibility and it's a direct way to get your music played because they're going to listen to it. Be like, oh, let me see if this helps me versus, you know, the SoundCloud thing could be hit or miss and, and it could also get taken down. But the edits is like the edits is like a tangible tool that a DJ could use. And then slowly but surely, every time they see your name on that edit, they know, oh, this, this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to download this. I need this. And then that's when you start working in those original productions, those uh your own production where you don't really need a SoundCloud because you kind of built an audience of like people that already trust you with your music. And then you give them that song and they're like, Oh yeah, I know it's going to be a banger because I've used his edits. I've used his bootlegs. So, you know, that's a, that's a good way. And, and right now there's a lot of tools where, you know, you don't need SoundCloud. I mean, direct email is always the best. Like if I get an email and it's like, here's 20 free edits, especially now where everyone's kind of doing the paywall, Patreon and like all that type of stuff. You know, you could you could build you could find your own lane with making edits and then progressing into production and and so forth. I still use that killing me softly Zay edit, bro. <laughs> you see, it's like twenty five years old and you still got it. Yeah, Mixcloud Mixcloud is great for mixes, um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely start putting your mixes on Mixcloud if you want to put full-length DJ mixes. Great spot for that. Um, but like you said, the edits is a great way to build credibility, especially like if you want to travel, things like that. If people start recognizing your name just from like the edit game, the mashup game, the remix game, that type of stuff, that really can help just like that's like almost like a cheat code to like skip some steps right because yeah as a dj yeah yeah so what he's saying is you you can diesel because it's going to automatically when you upload a soundcloud automatically it's going to try to monetize it for you if you deselect that 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 you you stand a better chance because now you're not trying to monetize your bootleg remix you know and that that that's something you always have to go in and do like before you upload because it will be checked off yeah. any other questions all right, sick. All right, cool. So we're going to start wrapping this up. Uh, I got a few other things to say here uh, regarding the Rockwell guys. By the way, hey, you, you can answer regarding this question. If anyone here tonight wants to get in contact with anybody from Rockwell, whether it be MK, Zaya, or Brian, what would be the best way to do that? I mean, naturally, our, our IGs on a personal level um, is the best way to go. Um, you can connect with us after this as well. Be glad to uh, uh, give you our Instagrams, our, our, our emails, numbers, whatever that may be. Um, Brian with a Y underscore is mine. DJ Zaya, DJ MK, pretty easy to remember. Mine's probably the longest one. 
Um, and then if you wanted to get a hold of uh, Rockwell in general, um, Zaya will give you a few options on depending what you are looking to um, contact us for. So that way you can go through the proper channels. Uh, well, no, we don't have that. I mean, as far as like, you know, we, we're offering a special wire sound package. If you go to rockwelltalent.com slash wire sound, we'll have a, a couple packages there just for those that are looking to kind of take those next steps and want to go down that path of, you know, your next step in your career as a DJ. Um, that's if it, that's directly what you're looking for. And, you know, any other general inquiries, whether, you know, maybe you have all your stuff on point and you think, you know, you're ready for something. You can always email info at rockwelltalent.com and our office manager will hit you right away, right, <laughs> right away. And uh, but yeah, it's rockwelltalent.com slash wired sound for that special uh, promo that we're running. And that's kind of covering everything that we talked about today, but in a more one on one, you know, direct uh, setting. And yeah, DJ Zaya, DJ MK, Brian with a Y underscore, and DJ Jordan Sanchez. That's me. Yeah, you can find us at Wired Sound Academy. Oh, and at Rockwell though. Talent. And oh, Wired Rockwell Sound. Talent. Yeah, yeah. And of course, you know where to find us here. We're always here upstairs at uh, Sistrunk Marketplace. Um, and we're going to wrap things up. Big thank you to Rockwell Talent for coming through. That was awesome. Thank you to everybody that came. By the way, if you want to stick around, we're going to do a little bit of open decks, and you can also. Uh, talk to the to the Rockwell guys here. They'll stick around as well to answer any other questions that you might have. And uh, we're gonna do a little transition over to the open decks. Uh, feel free to get some drinks, food, or whatever in the marketplace, and uh, you know get to know these guys a little bit more. And everybody else here, everybody else here is like a DJ or producer. So yeah, get popping. Let's go. And Thank you. you. And if you guys want over here, we got some free uh, swag. If you guys want to grab some socks or towels or. Some bookmarks. Oh, I want socks. But yeah, thank you guys. We appreciate it, man. Yes.